Hello everyone and welcome to the world of scatter plots. We are going to have a few lessons um, in our advanced math classes about scatter plots, starting with this lesson on scatter plots and association. So you might be wondering, well, what is a scatter plot? Sounds a little bit scattered. And it is visually, scatter plots do look a bit scattered with data points shown on a um, coordinate plane. So um, I like to go sometimes to this website called mathisfun.com, which I also recommend to my students if they're ever needing just a little bit of math information in somewhat of a summarized um, student-friendly kind of form. So if we head on over to um, that website, I pulled up the definition of something called bivariate data because scatter plots are all about using um, bivariate data. Well, the prefix bi, as you may already know, actually means two. So um, bivariate data, variate meaning variables, um, is data for two variables. Usually they're, the piece of information are related in some way. One thing affects another and usually there's an X variable and a Y variable. So um, I pulled up this one example on mathisfun.com and it shows ice cream sales versus the temperature on a certain day and it shows um, it's looking to see hey are these two pieces of data somehow related? Um, if one thing changes will the other thing change and in what direction? Um, like will ice cream sales go up when the temperature goes up? And of course we can kind of already determine um, just by using our reasoning skills and what we know, what we've observed ourselves, um, we would probably say, okay, once that temperature goes up to a certain level, we'll probably see sales increase on ice cream. Um, if you only were to have one set of data, as it mentions here on this screen, um, if it was just like you were measuring temperature, um, that would be called univariate data because una means um, uni means one. All right, so we're speaking about bivariate data here in this lesson today with scatter plots. I also wanted to share with you just a few things or places in the real world where scatter plots could be seen because um, just to put things into context because you might be wondering, okay, this is yet one more thing to learn, but what are we going to do with it? So scatter plots. Um, are one way that we can kind of measure and analyze types of data that um, deal with two variables. There are a few other ways or, or means or methods um, to measure or compare and analyze data that we are not going to dwell on as much um, in the seventh grade, but you will see it in higher levels of math. Besides scatter plots, you might hear about correlation coefficients or also linear regression. And we are going to take these scatter plots and look for trends and maybe talk a little bit lightly um, about linear regression, but you'll discuss that in higher levels of math in more detail. All right, so some of the areas that you may see scatter plots used um, where you're analyzing bivariate data would be in business. Sometimes businesses compare their revenues to their expenses. So maybe a business is interested in seeing, hey, if we spend more money on advertising, what will happen to our revenues, our earnings? Um, and they might show the trends with that. Also in the medical field, you might see where um, there's data taken by age of people's resting heart rates. And then that data is analyzed and studied and they can determine different things about patients' ages versus their heart rates. And that could affect other things, um, making decisions in the medical field. There's also um, bivariate data used in academics, education. Maybe, have you ever wondered, hey, if what's the number of hours I were to study and max out on how well I, I would do on a test? Um, is there a point where um, too much studying could lead to lower test scores versus getting a higher test score. Um, maybe just different study habits can be analyzed of different um, students to see do more hours of study uh, mean that we'll see a result of a higher grade point average or higher grade for that student. 
in economics maybe you'll um if you work in the business field as well you might study um different trends in the economy with population um does it make sense that the more schooling somebody is exposed to um do we see a correlation with that and how much money that they'll make in their jobs their annual income and then maybe more in the sciences, you would maybe study the number of inches of rainfall versus the variety of plants and plant life that's found in different regions of the world. And we can go on and on with more and more things, um, even in the sports um, um, area in, in this world. Maybe there's different statistics that are taken to see um, the, you know, does the, I guess, the experience of the players um, correlate with how many points are scored in a given game um, or how much time they're on the the field um, during the game does that in any way affect how their scoring is in that game or anything else with their overall statistics and their effectiveness so um, there's just we can go on and on but scatter plots are very important and will show us the trends of what's happening between two sets of data. So with all of that background and that being said, let's get started with our notes here. So scatter plots are graphs that are used to display numerical data with two vari variables. So it's called bivariate data. So on these blanks, we're gonna put display numerical data numerical data with two variables, or also known as bivariate data. Bi means two, variate, think variable. What do scatter plots do? They can help us determine if one variable has an effect on the other, or if there's any overall trends or patterns or association between the variables. Are they really connected to one another or associated with one another? So looking for trends, patterns, or association between the two variables. All right, let's get right into it and take a look at this graph that's shown about Zara. So Zara surveyed shoppers at a mall to see how many items they'd purchased and the total amount of money they had spent at the mall. She used the data to create the scatter plot shown. How many shoppers did Zara survey? So that's the first question. The second question, does the number of items purchased seem to have an effect on the amount of money a shopper spent? And then be ready to explain. All right, so to find out how many shoppers are there in the survey, you basically have to count up all those little dots. So um, let me see if I can mark them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I see sixteen dots on my scatter plot. So each dot is um, one data point, meaning one shopper. Um, who we surveyed said how many items they purchased and what they spent. So um, we could actually pick one of those data points. And if I pick something like, um, let's look at this one here, if I can just highlight a little bit, just erase some of these. I'm going to just highlight this one dot right here. It looks like one shopper that they surveyed bought six items and spent $120, for instance. That would be one person surveyed. All right, does the number of items purchased seem to have an effect on the amount of money a shopper spent? Okay, well, if I look at those dots and how they are, does it look like there's some kind of trend to them, either upwards trend, downwards trend, wavy trend? a straight across trend, a vertical trend. All right, it looks to me, although the dots are kind of scattered, as you can see here, it kind of looks to me as if um, the more items that were purchased, 
and this could have been any like small small price or large price items but the number of items purchased makes the total spending go up so it does look like they are um, the number of items purchased is affecting how much money you'll spend and that makes sense to me you know we think about that as shoppers so yes in general as the number of items purchased increases the total amount of money spent also increased. Okay, I didn't dot all of my I's, just going back to dot my I's. In general, as the number of items purchased increases, the total amount of money spent also increases. I probably should make my tents all the same there and put in increases. All right, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about how things could be associated on a scatter plot next. All right, so we're going to look at this table here and we're going to define three possible types of association. So let me just highlight types of association that could be seen in a scatter plot. Please box or highlight what I do. All right, there's three types, one of which is called positive association. As one variable increases, the other variable increases. Kind of like what we just saw with the shopping, buying the items, and spending. The variable changes in the same direction. Like as the price goes up, or the, as the number of items we buy goes up, the price goes up. All right, there's a second type of association called negative association. And that's when as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. And the variables are changing in opposite directions. If you look on the example graph shown with all those little dots, it's kind of like a downward trend from left to right. If I scan and read that graph from left to right, just like I'm reading a book, I could see it starts up high with those dots and goes down low on the x-axis as we scan across it. All right, then there's a situation when there's no association kind of things are all scattered about so much so that you can't really see any kind of trend. So the change in one variable has no effect on the second variable. So notice how this, all these dots look very scattered. Kind of all over the place. It's hard to really pick out are things changing in a downward or upward trend. All right, so that's our three types of association. All right, whoops, I think I may have skipped a little section here. Let me go back. All right, so next we're going to describe the type of association that you'd expect to see between the following variables. And we'll explain in our explanation. All right, so number one says the number of shoes a person owns and the number of states they've visited. Okay, I don't really think that there would be any association between those pieces of data. No association would be my thought. Okay, so how would we explain that? The number of shoes a person owns ha 
has no effect on the number of states visited. And the other way around, the number of states visited probably has no effect on the number of shoes we own. All right, in the next example, the size in ounces of a steak and the cost of the steak. Well, I've been to a number of restaurants, as I'm sure a number of you have, and I would say that that's a positive association because I know that they charge you more the bigger the steak that you buy, the bigger the piece of beef, right? So there's positive association. The ounces of steak, the, the cost increases, right? Cost of the steak increases as the number of ounces increases. So it's a positive correlation or positive association. And number three, the number of days since watering a plant and the moisture level of the soil. All right, so if it's been a lot of days since I've watered a plant, what happens to the soil? It gets more dry, right? So the moisture level goes down. So the days are increasing since I last watered, but yet the moisture in the soil goes down because it's getting the soil's getting dry. So this sounds like a negative association. One thing's going up, one thing's going down. And then after the semicolon, I'm going to say, as the number of days since watering increases the moisture level of the soil decreases. So one thing's going up and the other variable would be going downwards. So that would be one of those trends that looks like a downward sloping scatter plot graph. All right, next. We can also describe the strength of association. So please highlight or underline the word strength. Strength of association seen on a scatter plot and whether the association is linear or nonlinear. So linear means line. So underneath the word linear, oops, let me just put in a different color here. Underneath the word linear, put line. Like a straight line. Nonlinear would be not a straight line. <laughs> okay, so the strength of association. If data points are close together, the association is strong. And if the data points are widely spread, the association is weak. W-E-A-K. All right, linear versus nonlinear. Oh, so, okay, in our example here, let me just, this would be strong because the data points are kind of clustered together, and this one that's scattered would be a weak association. All right, over here, 
If a straight line can be drawn to show the overall trend of a scatter plot, the association can be described as linear, like kind of straight line. So notice the trend here in these dots here is kind of like, if I were to draw a line, it would kind of be in the middle of all those dots. Those dots are kind of following a line. A little scattered, but following a line. So that's linear. And the other one, the other graph that's shown there, is nonlinear. So this one is linear. And the other one, it looks like a U that's upside down. That's nonlinear. It's making a curve, not a line. All right, and that's association, strength, or linear, nonlinear. All right, use scatter plots A through D to answer questions four through seven. Which scatter plot or scatter plots show linear association? I would say there's a couple here that show linear. I see B kind of is going a little bit upwards trend in a positive um, association and C even though it's a little more scattered compared to B it's kind of going in a little bit of a line um, so I would say B and C are linear okay number five which scatter plots show nonlinear a little bit more curve perhaps would be A it's a little curvy and so is D. So non-linear for those. Which scatter plot shows the weakest association? Hmm, the weakest. Where are those things scattered the most? Those dots look most scattered in C. So weak association, weakest was probably letter C. They're kind of scattered about. And which scatter plot shows the strongest? Which ones are those points clustered together the most? Would be in the first one, A, because like all those dots are very tight together. Okay, strongest association. All right, in number eight, nine, and 10, we're gonna draw a line from each scatter plot to the best description of its association, and then to the variables it would most likely represent. Not all choices um, will be used here. So let's look at number eight. Eight looks like there's a lot of scattered dots. I really can't tell at some times if those dots are going, they look like they start going a little downwards from left to right, but then they look kind of trending upwards um, as we scan across that graph from left to right. So I would say that's kind of like a no association um, situation. So I'm going to connect number eight with no association. All right, let's look at number nine. Would you say that is positive or negative? Well, see, if I scan that graph from left to right, I could see an upwards trend, so it looks positive, and it looks kind of straight line-ish. Um, so I would say it's positive and linear. And number 10 looks like negative association, because from left to right, it looks like it's going downwards. So I would say that one's negative and linear. All right, now let's take a look back to number eight. What would you say you can connect to number eight? Um, the temperature outside and the total gallons of gas sold at a gas station. Okay, is there any way, I mean, if you need gasoline, don't you need it, whether the temps are cold or hot on a kind of a regular basis? So there's really no, like you wouldn't use more gas when the temperatures go up or less gas when the temperatures go up. So there's not any like positive or negative association there. So I think actually that temperature and total gallons, they're not really well connected with each other or associated. So I'd say this is no association. So 
This one down here was number eight, and I'd say this description would be number eight. All right, let's look um, at the, la the next one down. The altitude of a hiker and the total oxygen level in the air. Well, I know that I don't know a lot about um, sciences, but I know enough to know that as you go up higher and hike in higher elevations, there's less oxygen. So altitude higher, oxygen lower. So I'm saying opposites, so it's negative and linear. So that would match number 10. So I'm going to connect that with a red line over to here. So that's number 10 over here. And this one would be connected to number 10 as an example. And then our last one, um, let's see, the size of a home and the cost of monthly utilities for the home. Now utilities is like um, heating and electricity that you need in your home. Um, sometimes they consider water as a utility as well. Um, so of course if you're using more electricity, water, um, heating, the cost of that's going to go up. So that's increase, increase. So that would be a positive correlation or association. So that would be number nine. So positive and linear. So up here was number nine and down here would have been, oops, would have been number nine. Okay, so hopefully um, we're getting to understand um, what it means um, to be associated and whether we have a weak association or a strong one, or whether we have a positive or a negative or no association. And then we'll just take this into our next lesson along the way and um, build on this so that we can kind of start seeing how to make a scatter plot and then how to dig deeper in analyzing more scatter plots. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you again next time. Bye.